Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about taxation and why Europe is so concerned about collecting taxes in Africa. Now there are multiple reasons to it and I will show you a clip that will explain some of it and then I will tell you more reasons why they are so interested in collecting taxes in Africa because they are spending a lot of money to train African tax collectors and to improve the African taxation system. Now you might think that's a good thing and partly it is. However, let me explain why they are so concerned. But before we get started, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. The West has a plan to squeeze even more money out of Africa and they're calling it tax collectors without borders. And so what they're doing is that they're training hundreds of thousands of tax collectors that aren't loyal to any one country in Africa and they're providing those as resources so that the African governments can tax their own citizens more effectively. It's basically a one-two punch. The first thing that they did through the IMF and the World Bank was they got African countries in a lot of debt and the cost of servicing that debt started to eat up almost all of the government revenue in many of the African countries. And the Western world came in and said, hey, what if we train tax collectors for you and offer all of our advanced analytical tools that we use to tax people in the Western world? And if you do these tax reforms that we propose, we'll give you even more loans so that you can do your big projects or maybe you can get that chalet in Switzerland. But unlike the Western world where the tax money might actually find itself circulating in the economy, because they set up these African nations in a lot of debt, the money that they collect from this increased tax revenue is just going to get shot out into the Western world, which is something that even the colonialists of the 1700s couldn't have dreamed would happen. So is there anything that can be done about this? My recommendation is if you're an African leader, even though it's hard, hit block on the World Bank, hit block on the IMF, and just don't do business with these people in the future. So I'm not trying to be... Now that's one reason, and I will get back to that. However, there's another reason which I've spoken previously about. When it came to Mali, Chad and Niger, one of the reasons why the coup was happening and one of the reasons that those countries after the coup, the first thing they did is they cut the tax agreement with Europe and France is because the agreement they had with Europe is that they can only tax in one country. Now the Europeans and the Americans, they always go to the poorer countries and they tell them that, hey, if you want investment, our companies will come to you, but you have to make sure that you don't do what's called a double taxation, basically taxing in, for example, Mali when they're collecting gold, and then taxing in France, for example. And they say that that will bring investment to your country. But what that literally means is that because, for example, the agreement that Mali had with France means that France companies own the gold. So the Mali government is not getting anything from the gold that the company is getting. So the only way they can get some money from their gold is by taxing it. But because they can tax it, because the agreement is that you cannot do double taxation, so the European company will say, ah, oh, Mali, I own the mine and I will pay my taxes to France because I'm based in France. I'm already paying taxes to France. So that means that Mali literally was not getting a penny from their gold. Can you believe that? And that's absurd. So one of the things that the French government was complaining, they weren't even happy with that. They said that these companies are lying to us. So we have to make sure that we know how much money and how much gold these companies are actually making in Africa so that we can tax them more in Europe. So this is another way that they are taking money out of the African economy into their own. Now when it comes to Europe, those agreements are ridiculous because if we cannot own the mines and we cannot collect taxes from the mines, we are literally not benefiting anything from our gold and our natural resources. Now with China, it is a little bit different. Now there are problems there as well. But the difference with China is, first of all, there are time limits to the agreements, for example, that Congo made with the Chinese cobalt companies. 20 years. Okay, 20 years you can mine here and we own this mine 50-50. So, Congo, if they're not collecting taxes from the Chinese companies, which they actually are, but if they wouldn't be, well, at least they would make money because they own half of it. Do you understand? But with the French company, they want to own the mine 100%. And same thing with the Canadian mining companies. They want to own the mine 100% and then they don't want to pay taxes. Now, of course, what this, all of this will mean is that they just want to make sure 
that we will pay the IMF debt. And we are in a debt trap in many of these countries. For example, Kenya is currently begging for another IMF loan. So more money will go to Europe and more money will be taken from the middle class, from the poor. You know, the leaders, they won't pay any taxes, but the poor are going to pay even more and we will not see any financial benefit as long as we have these agreements. But anyways, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.